Before we dive into the layout aspect of map design, we need to learn a little bit about the tile set pages and how they differ from each other on a technical level. Right now, we are looking at the Overworld tile sets page A. It doesn't look like there's much to it, but it is more powerful than it seems at first glance. What we need to understand here is that page A's tiles are static. They have specific rules that involve how the tiles are drawn and connect to each other. This happens behind the scenes, bringing us up to decide how we want the map to look and not having to worry about manually selecting from a large library of tiles, which also exists behind the scenes, to make sure that the corners and edges look right. Pages B through E contain tiles that can be applied to a map on top of the tiles that come from page A. Furthermore, the tiles from pages B through E are also accessible as event images, and we will cover that later. Let's make sure that we are in map mode. Then right click on throne room in the map list and click edit. We're now going to change the tile set this map uses. Click the button under tile set and select inside. Change height to 26. Now click OK. Now we see that the tile section has a whole bunch more to choose from and the size of the editable space has doubled vertically. Now let's paint down the floor. To save time, select Flood Fill as the painting tool. Point at a tile and look at the bottom of the screen. You will see that the tile's name is shown. Now find and click on the Wood Floor B tile to select it. Click anywhere in the editable space to fill it with the selected tile. Next we need to put some walls in, which is done in two parts. First, select the Pencil tool. Now find the two tiles named Wall A Stone. Select the top one. Now draw that tile across the top border of the map. Next, select the bottom tile of wall A stone. From the leftmost tile in the strip we just drew, draw down three tiles. Press and hold the right mouse button on the top of those three tiles and drag down to the bottom one to select all three. Now draw across to the other side of the map. The north wall of the throne room is done. The ability to select and duplicate sections of the map eliminates the need to painstakingly draw every row and column, saving you valuable time. A throne room is useless without a throne on a raised platform. Find and select the cobblestone B tile. Switch to the rectangle tool. Click and drag until you have a 5x3 rectangle overlapping the bottom row of the north wall as pictured here. Switch back to pencil mode and right click drag to select a full column of the wall. Put two instances of that selection on either side of the cobblestone B area with the bottom tile below it as shown. Select the top wall A stone tile. Now connect those two full wall columns we just placed with the back wall. Select the rug E tile. Use it to place a 3x2 area at the top of the cobblestone area as shown. Scroll down to the bottom of the tile set. Find and select the Stairs C Stone Left tile. Place it below the bottom left cobblestone tile as shown. With Stairs C Stone Right selected, draw the other end of the steps below the bottom right cobblestone tile. Now bridge those two tiles with Stairs C Stone Center. Now that we have the raised platform with steps, we need the throne. Switch to page B of the tile set. Scroll down, find and select the throne A tiles by pressing and holding the left mouse button and dragging until the 3x2 tile group is highlighted. Now place the throne on the rug area, overlapping the back wall as shown. OK, we've got our throne on a raised platform. Now click the Zoom Out button until the whole map is visible in the editable area. With the tiles we've been using, we will draw the east and southeast walls. The gaps left in the northeast corner are intentional, but we will come back to that later. Now let's give the west and southwest walls the same treatment. Now we are about to do something that typically does not happen at the start of beginner level map design but it really is easy and shows a quick way to get past a default limitation with RPG Maker MV. We talked about the tile set pages, how the tiles on page A differ from those on B and C. 
we are about to eliminate those differences by adding page D and putting tiles from page A into it. Open up the database and select the Tile Sets tab. Select the inside tile set since that is the one we are using for the throne room. Under Images, click the button under Category D. This opens the image selector. Find the image which contains the wall tiles used in the inside tile set and click OK. Now click OK again and pat yourself on the back. You just added a new page of tiles to our tile set. So why did we do this? It has to do with those gaps we left in the northeast and northwest corners of the throne room. And this will move us into lesson 6, an introduction to events. Time for a homework assignment. Look at tile set pages B and C and familiarize yourselves with the tile names that appear at the bottom of the screen when you point the mouse at them. Tiles from these pages can be used as event images, and when doing so, I will refer to the tiles by name. Knowing where the tiles are in the tile set will make it easier. It should be noted that the tiles in the newly added page D are not named correctly, and when using tiles from this page, I will show you which ones to use to eliminate confusion. So right now, just study the tiles that are part of the default tile set. See you in the next lesson.